Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Gabriel Sanchez. Um, this is my first week as a master's student at New York University. And I'm skipping class over here. Very happy to be here. Um, I'm going to talk about a project that I'm building. It's called Descriptica. And, uh, oh. So, what is it? It's basically a web based environment for learning, listening, sharing, and creating algorithmic computer music using Scheme and JavaScript. It, all, it allows you to output MIDI, uh, sheet music, and it's also um, what I'm building right now is uh, so you can do like coding. It, it is intended as a, as a tool for others to learn uh, algorithmic composition. And uh, also what I call collect composition, that is when you know uh, a group of people uh, compose and share uh, code to create a composition. Uh, this software is uh, open source. And, uh, basically, uh, this is what I have uh, here. We can value. Yeah, there's probably going to switch here. Oh, okay. If you click on the so here's a demo. My main inspirations for doing this is this device by Kircher, uh, uh, which is uh, he did this device in the 17th century, where uh, where anyone could compose music, and uh, even if, if he has no musical knowledge. So I I, thought, I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, and anyone can go to the website and click a link, click the button, and generate a composition. So I think that's this one's my inspiration. And that's why I made it scripted. And so why this tool? Uh, it allows you to listen to an algorithm's composition and because sometimes we only listen to the pieces that are generated by, by the algorithm. But uh, in this way, you can click the, uh, click, click the algorithm and the algorithm will generate uh, different compositions. And maybe you can hear a uh, composition <coughs> that no one Whatever here. Uh, for composition, uh, it, it's really convenient because you can compose with it in any computer with an internet connection. So if you're bored in, in work or in school, you can just go over here and, uh, and create composition from, from there. Um, you can also share music. Um, it, it has a save button. And uh, when you click it, it creates a per moment and you can share your composition. And uh, also, the main objective is uh, to learn learning because, uh, uh, well, in Mexico, there's a lot of people that uh, want to learn about this. Uh, but sometimes, uh, uh, we cannot afford it. For example, uh, I went to a course in California, and it cost me like, uh, 
thousand dollar. And uh, well, not everyone has that uh, end one, uh, so I wanted to make that too, so that uh, for the school, uh, you know, kind of better. Um, some of the musical operations you have is uh, for creating chords, you put the notes, and you either uh, specify it's uh, minor, major, uh, major seven, uh, dominant, and uh, you can also put a, a maybe number, and I will bring a list of the chord. Uh, with the pitches to numbers function, you can, create, uh, you can convert the pitches to, to numbers. Uh, you have the chopper function, uh, generate series, uh, delta to get the intervals, uh, retrograde motion, uh, polygon, constant volume, for inversions you can use the rotate. Uh, you can also transpose and you know, patterns. For rhythms, uh, you can either work with uh, integral values, um, with symbols, and uh, fractions. And here's a, a verse. Uh, an example of, uh, of how to do the uh, sonification. I try to keep it as simple as I can. So basically, first you uh, set the tempo, in this case, to 20, and you define that data, uh, that's a list, random data. And uh, you use the normalized function to rescale uh, the data. And you do the same for the operations and the velocities. Then you just uh, do the events and say oh, it's a mini function, or you can also call the play mini function, and it will uh, play or say that. Uh, you can also create uh, a lot of shells, uh, which is uh, a pretty common use. Uh, you just use a markup uh, function, and you put a list pattern, and uh, basically uh, the function will analyze the pattern and uh, create new patterns, so it will return all these patterns, uh, but every time you call it, it's my question. Uh, it also have uh, seeds, uh, seed function, uh, seed union, to uh, do a union to two or more seeds, and uh, for intervalic sessions, uh, you just use a double function. I'm also using uh, artificial, well, you can use artificial <coughs> uh, I'm using a library called BrainJS, and basically uh, you can use uh, networks if you want to uh, apply it in a composition. Uh, you can do that as well. And Scriptica is an educational tool. Well, uh, I wanted to test how it would work uh, as a tool for education. So I gave a four day uh, course at the National Center for the Arts. And the results were uh, very good. Uh, students that uh, <coughs> never uh, coded before, or well, some most of them have coded before, or some didn't, uh, you know, create some compositions. Here are some of what they created, uh, which is uh, pretty good considering that it was a coded uh, course. So <coughs> some of them learned skiing, some of them uh, how to use the composition. And here's some of the things that they created. This is a new This is a piece uh, that involves a uh, Fibonacci sequence, <coughs> Markov chains. Uh, and this one was a, a piece that uh, he wrote it like he was in the writing the box. Can we hear it? Yeah? I'm curious. Let's hear one of them. What? Which? All of them.
put the patterns in the scheme of your circuit temple. Um, you put the uh, list of the patterns. And you put that for the piano, for the bass, for the bass. Uh, then uh, you, those atomic patterns, you transform them into bigger patterns. You do it like this in JavaScript and this in Steam. And uh, then to create a form, uh, you basically uh, just in JavaScript, you create sections and you add it to the, in this case, to the piano, to the bass, to the, to the instrument you're creating. And Steam uh, just took this. And uh, basically, and for this piece, I think the scheme. It's a better option, at least for me, because it's easier to implement. Uh, and JavaScript, you have to create a section. And, uh, but it's not JavaScript, because JavaScript is, you can also do functional code. But uh, this, in this case, it's more optimized for it. Um, but, uh, but, but yes, uh, in this case, I think the scheme was a better option. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on randomization, so um, when you have randomization in the program, is it deterministic randomization? As in, if you send me the same code, do I hear the same piece that you heard? No, no, no. Uh, well, it depends on the piece. Uh, you have the code, and uh, the code can generate different pieces, like the Mozart example. 
each time you click it, uh, it will uh, generate a different composition. So it depends on the algorithm. Uh, it basically. So you essentially don't see the random, the pseudo random function. Oh yeah, yeah you can change that. I, I suppose it depends how many different pieces of music you think four minutes, 33 seconds is. For some folks, you won't do the same thing. Yeah, go You asked that question as if your position on randomization is a political. It is actually. <laughs> 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 Some of them uh, have used processing, yeah. and some of them use uh, scheme. Uh, actually, there a lot of people know scheme there. I was very surprised because uh, so I think a scheme in my case uh, was uh, easier for them. But is it a you promote indigenous people who've already got some programming experience? Well, not not everyone had like so a program experience. There were uh, visual artists uh, that never had coded before, and I think. Uh, I think JavaScript was, was probably easier because I don't know. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I should say that there's a very strong creative coding scene in Mexico City. Um, very strong live coding scene. Um, some, really, uh, some really nice languages like Fluxus. Ah, uh, yeah, Fluxus is very cool. Yeah, it's not so the scheme. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to have something from Mexico City. Any, any more last questions before we close? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, one well, I was just curious. You talked about a lot about your system and the results and the context, but the actual language, the actual, say, in, in scheme, is it purely declarative or partly imperative? What What is... How would you characterize? Well, I'd language? say it's, it's functional uh, because uh, you're using the sending functions to, to other functions. And, uh, I'd say it's, it's functional. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, sir.